refuge. Uh, let's go to God in prayer this morning. Uh, most holy God, we give you thanks because you are good. And we pray that the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts might be pleasing in your sight. O oh, Lord, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of my son's favorite books is Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Has anyone read Diary of a, of a Wimpy Kid? Yeah, you like that book, those books, those series, and they, they even made movies. I haven't read any of the books. So I, I've, I've, uh, I, I've watched some of the movies, and I, I love the, the cheese slice, right, that you're not supposed to, to touch, and if you touch it, then what are, they, what are you called? Cheese man or something? I don't know. It's been there on the playground for years, and if you touch it, then you basically become an untouchable, right? And it's middle school is so fun because people just make up things that either make you in or, or out. And that's a rough time to be alive, I think, as a middle school, um, uh, because you are trying something new and everyone's sort of growing up and hitting that certain age where they're start, they start caring more about what people think of them and how they are viewed and that sort of thing. Um, maybe I was near middle school when I got my, my watch that had the street signs on it. It was a great gift, Mom. Don't be upset. It's okay. Um, and, uh, but I remember when I was in, in middle school and, uh, I was not, uh, a particularly popular kid. I was kind of like, uh, I wasn't as ambitious as the wimpy kid and diary of the wimpy kid. I don't even know his name, but I wasn't as, as ambitious as him. I wasn't too concerned with being cool. I was just, I want to fly underneath the radar, right? And just not get noticed. I just don't want to be picked on and, uh, or, or made fun of here in, in middle school. And then I found out there were whisperings in the air, right, that a girl liked me, and which is very, very rare, okay? <laughs> but, but, but I had the perception in my head that this person was seen as even nerdier than me, okay? And so I was avoiding people who say, oh, she likes you, do you like her? I was like, no, absolutely not, gross, Puh, uh, right? And that's what I would do all the time. And I was mean in that way because I didn't want to be seen as even like nerdier than I already was. And this wonderful, wonderful girl stopped me in the hallway on the way to lunch one day, pulled me to the side. And I got really, really nervous. And she said, I'm sorry for that you heard these things. And I do like you, but it's okay. You know, and she was just the most gracious, kind person in the world and she just had like just such a wonderful, wonderful heart, already years and years ahead of her time in, in time in terms of maturity, cared much less about what people thought of her and who she actually was as a person. And that influenced me in that moment. And and all of a sudden I started seeing things a, a little bit different. That it, care, it matters more about the people than it does about how you're being viewed in the world. Let's read, let's keep all that in mind as we read our scripture today. We're going to read from Isaiah 52, verses 1 through 7. Um, and in this setting, uh, so Isaiah is a, a prophet, okay? And so this is a prophetic text. Prophetic texts will tell you hard things about your life, how things are not as they should be. And sometimes they'll say, this is why you have experienced what you're experiencing. But often, also in a prophetic text, they will tell you that you have suffered enough and that your time is coming where you will be delivered, okay? And we have entered into that portion of the text here in Isaiah. Uh, it references how the people, the Israelites, have in the past been, when they, when they went to Egypt, they were enslaved in Egypt. And so people who read it would remember how God delivered them. And now they are being held captive by Babylon or the Assyrians. It was part of the Assyrian empire, and he's telling them that this will not always be, and that God will deliver you. This is the text from Isaiah. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion, put on your beautiful garments. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall enter you no more. Shake yourself from the dust, rise up. O oh, captive Jerusalem, loose the bonds from your neck, O oh, captive daughter Zion. 
For thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, long ago my people went down into Egypt to reside there as aliens. The Assyrians too has oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what am I doing here, says the Lord, seeing that my people are taken away without cause? Their rulers howl, says the Lord, and continually all day long my name is despised. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore in that day they shall know that it is I who speak. Here am I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. I was recently watching an episode of the show Botched. Does anyone here know what the show Botched is? I'm glad that you don't, okay? That's good. These are people who have had pretty extreme plastic surgery for one reason or another, and things did not go well, or they are no longer happy with the results. And so they go back into the plastic surgeon to have them fix it or have them do something new, okay? And plastic surgery is a fine thing to do. I'm not here to knock plastic surgery. If that is something you choose, I don't, I don't particularly have a preference or care about that. But I was taken about this one person who was on the show, and I'm not going to go into the details because it's not appropriate in this setting or probably any setting for me to tell you uh, what was happening in it. But this person, when asked why they wanted to do what they were doing, they said, well, I have gotten so many followers on Instagram, 16.3 three million followers, and I love them so much. I just want to be able to give them what they want, right? I just want to be able to give them what they want. And, some, and so instead of I know who I am, and this is me, and I would like to influence people with who I am. She has amassed so many followers and has, this, has taken on the identity solely as an influencer so that she will give whatever message or presentation to her followers so that they will remain her followers. And she can't be the only person in the world who, who, who does this. I'm sure that there are a lot of people whose their focus, their goal is to be the influencer, right? It's not necessarily to, to be an influencer so they can share the message that remains the same, right? No, they, 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 they put aside, they will change the message so that they can remain an influencer. The scripture says, how beautiful on the mountain are the feet that come to proclaim peace, that come to bring good news. I once had beautiful feet for about a day. I went to and got, a, what do they call it? A pedicure, right? Have you ever gotten a pedicure before? I have once. It was very relaxing, right? A friend said, I'm going to go get a pedicure. You want to go with me? I was like, sure. I've never been. They said, we got this extra stuff on the bottom of your feet. I can take it off for you. I said, that's very nice of you. Go ahead. They didn't say it'll be $15 extra. They just charged that at the end, right? Tell me what it's going to cost up front, right? Now I know. It's, now I'm going to start treating pedicures like I do restaurants. Would you like some avocado with that? It depends. Is it free? And then I'll have some avocado, right? But so my feet felt really, really good, and I, 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 they looked spectacular, right? I was just going along, flip-flopping all day long because they looked so good. I don't do that anymore because it's been a while um, since I've done that. But, but if, I had, if I had gone up to someone in, in, in the street, right, and, 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 and I had even offered them something to help them, right, would they have said that my feet were beautiful because of the help that I had given or because my feet were actually beautiful. The scripture isn't saying 
that people who bring good news actually have beautiful feet, right? They're saying the feet are beautiful because they travel to deliver good news. To, pray, to proclaim release to those who are in captivity. To proclaim peace to those who do not experience peace right now. That is why the feet are beautiful. And we, the church, which includes you, are supposed to be people who have beautiful feet. Not because we go get pedicures, but because we're delivering good news, right? I don't know if you've seen this, this Instagram account. It was popular, really popular about two, three years ago. It's called Preachers in Sneakers, right? And then I noticed Spencer was wearing some knockoff Jordans up here. It just made me laugh a little bit. Uh, looks, you look really good, man. Some beautiful feet you got today, right? And so it talks about, it shows how much the clothes are worth that these preachers and worship leaders are, are wearing, right? And there's, that's okay. Like, there's nothing wrong with clothes, right? I spent about 50 bucks on, on these shoes, probably about, uh, these are my only, like, one or two pair of pants. What an outfit of the day. Uh, these are, uh, I don't know, uh, Revtown. This is uh, Sonoma. I've probably got this at uh, TJ Maxx for $12.99. Um, I don't know. Socks are golden toe. I bought two packs, like, three years ago at Walmart, and I haven't gone through them yet, so that's what I'm uh, wearing today. Um, but somehow we got confused about what is the most important part. Somehow we thought, okay, it's the message, right? And we've thought we need to change with the time so that people can hear the message that we have. And that is completely, I think, okay and legitimate. But sometimes we are so flashy, we become so out there that we, it sort of gets lost about what is the most significant thing, that you are, have, are beautiful because of the message that you're delivering, or you're just beautiful because you're beautiful, right? And sometimes we see this in the news, if you're paying attention to uh, uh, different stories and that sort of stuff, you'll see large organizations that have become the most popular Christian organizations in, like, in the entire world, and they get brought down, right? Because people made mistakes. And you look at them and you think, were people going there to hear the good news, or were they going there because they, because they were beautiful people? And they might get a chance to see a celebrity, right? And celebrities are, are wonderful. There's nothing wrong with the, a celebrity. They're a person too. But it's when we get confused about what the most significant part is. Whether it's being influencer, an influencer having lots of followers, or whether it's seeking to become an influencer so you can share the message. When we lose what the most important part is, the message or the followers. It becomes a problem. And we here in, in, in Rooted, uh, we're actually getting a slightly different message from what they're getting in the traditional service today. In the traditional service, they're getting, guys, if we're using uh, things from the 1950s and we haven't made any changes, then are we actually serious about being able to influence people today, right? My message is, like, we're comfortable with changing, right? We introduce new songs all the time, right? Sometimes even new instruments. Uh, I might change my style of preaching here or there. We changed this uh, backdrop a few years ago, and it may change again. We're trying new prayer practices. We change how the refreshment table works. We change how hospitality works all the time, right? We change what we do uh, in, in the community, what our affinity groups are. Those have changed a little bit. Our bohos, we've changed where we meet, how we meet, when we meet. On Easter, we'll be outside, and we're going to have cool stuff, right? We're going to have uh, uh, what are those called? Uh, breakfast tacos, right? We're going to have coffee, and, and you're going to be like, oh, sweet, breakfast tacos, coffee, cool, 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 right? And so we're comfortable with change, right? And we do that because we want to be flexible enough with the times to be able to speak to people. But we can't lose sight of why the feet are beautiful. It's not because of any of those things. 
It's not because we have changed up the messaging or, or it doesn't matter what the vehicle is. That's not what makes us beautiful. What makes our feet beautiful, it's the message that they carry. And Isaiah tells us here that the feet bring good news. The feet bring peace. The feet bring release to the captive. And so that message changes a little bit based on what is being, what is keeping you held captive. But the base of the message is that you are free. Because we serve a God who hears our cry. We serve a God who wants good for us. We serve a God who we have access to even in the midst of the bad and the worst times of our life. We serve a God who is for you. And whatever is holding you captive right now, Whatever is holding you back, whatever fears you are struggling with, whatever doubts you are struggling with, whatever insecurities you are struggling with, the good news is that God is with you and that God loves you and that God is offering you joy even in the midst of that sorrow. And that gives us the power and the energy from God to be able to take one more step. To be able to take one more step, even if we can't see the end, right? So I pray that for you today. That in the midst of whatever is holding you captive, in, whatever, in the midst of whatever is bringing you a sense of complete unease and distress that you may hear the good news that you are deeply loved by God and that God is with you. And may that give you the courage to be beautiful feet for the world, that you can take that message to other people with your, with your words and with your actions. Because it doesn't take very much looking around, you know, or paying attention to the news to know that there's a lot of people who need to hear the good news. May we have beautiful feet and proclaim peace and live with peace and proclaim release of the cap captive and proclaim good news. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus was sitting around a table with his friends and um, he was telling them that he was about to suffer on their behalf. And his feet were, were nailed to a cross. You wouldn't objectively look at his feet and say, those are beautiful. But if you know what those feet are accomplishing, they're the most beautiful feet in the world. That night he took the bread, he gave thanks over it and blessed it. He said, this is my body. He broke it. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you eat this, I want you to remember me and the life that I live. And he took the cup and gave thanks over it and blessed it and said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, I want you to remember me and the life that I live. And so... We do that today, and we pray that these items not become for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Amen.